Hello everyone and welcome back to the Couch Buddies. We have an exciting episode this week. Grab some coffee because this is going to be a good one. I am Blade. And I am DJ. It's not an episode, it's a couch episode. I've Damn been telling it. you this for a long Damn time. Damn it! <laughs> I knew I would catch you one day. You bastard! <laughs> yeah, bastard. baby! <laughs> so guys welcome to another great couch episode um not much to say about it we're just gonna go you know right on to the news and uh, well no, no, not news because there's nothing news about what we're going to talk <laughs> <laughs> all right blade you want to kick it off and uh, let us know what we're going to talk about today yeah let's get right into it and let's talk right about some good moldy games mm -hmm. <laughs> okay and I'm going to, to a real good one, just to kick it off, mm. like, whoosh. we're going back to mm -hmm. 81, to an arcade game. This is an epic one, really okay. epic. And I know everyone knows this one, even if they hadn't played it. It's called Donkey Kong. Aha. This okay. is a legend. So, this isn't a game, the this first, is a legend. The first appearance of Super Mario before he was called Super Mario. Yeah, he, and he wasn't a plumber. It was, he was a carpenter in that game. I know. And he didn't have a <laughs> no. name, and he changed his name twice before he became Mario. He didn't have a name at start. But, out of curiosity, this was pro probably the first game to ever have the, its story unfold on screen. The game tell, told the story while you played it, so it was awesome. It, it had cutscenes. Well... Semi cutscenes, whatever you want to call them, but this game was awesome. It was a, the the base block for every platformer nowadays. You had the the enemies, you had the the jumping, the walking around. This was the base for everything, and it was quite simple. You had Donkey Kong, the villain. You had the plumber or the carpenter or Mario or whoever one you want to give it the name, and you had the 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 damsel in distress. That was his girlfriend. It wasn't Peach. Okay. Which is which is terribly similar to Peach. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't. But the it was simple. You had to just go get go get her, save her from, from Donkey Kong. This was the premise. And you had like four level different types of levels. Well not levels, they called it levels and scenarios. You had the the most beloved one, the first one, where you go from right to left climbing up doing those going the, up the ramps and the ladders and you could pick up the hammer and just blast the the barrels that Donkey Kong was throwing at you and you would throw some of them on fire that was that was fun and you had to get to the top then you had levels where it was more like a, a platformer where you had to simply get up there you had another level where you had conveyor belts where it was a little bit challenging to get past those and you had the the supposed last level where you had four platforms you had to remove eight bolts so the platforms fell and Donkey Kong with them, so you could rescue the damsel in distress. And the game would just keep rolling back the levels and going and going and going. Till you get the highest score you could. Think, but this I was think awesome. There's, there's, I, I think that Donkey Kong surpassed the status of, of an awesome game. Yeah. It became an icon of, of pop culture. And uh, we've and seen it referred... It, we've seen it referred on a lot of movies. I mean, namingly yeah. the 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 latest one uh, from Steven Spielberg, uh, the uh, Ready Player One, and I, I mean it's it's oh, one yeah. of those games that that comes up every single time. You have if you have to if you have to go back to the early days of gaming. I mean, we're not talking about you know the early days of Pong, you know, like the the yeah. the, the rackets yeah. in each side. No, that that's not it. I mean, I mean, if we go back to the early days of the eight bits, I think that you know that's the me one of the most memorable games that exists. This and, is a uh, must game, a must play it, and a must know. And, and I think it paved the way for many things, like yeah. you said. All right. I mean, there's no way to go around that classic. So, and there's also not a lot to say. Everybody had played it. I'm and pretty see, sure. I told you we would kick off big, like. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you're just you know you're just putting all your you know high cards on the table and stuff like that. And then when you need them, you don't have them. So nah, just, don't you know, worry. It, it can only go downhill from here on. So, eh. well, not really because okay. So <laughs> the, the next game I'm going to talk about it's it's not going to be like you know a, a, a terrible game, but it's not actually you know a, a blockbuster either. The game I'm going to talk about yes, is downhill. Bubba. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So now I already said half of the name of the game. Come yeah. on, man. You just ruined the whole experience. 
the game I'm talking, I'm going to talk about is Bubbin Sticks from 1994, and oh. this uh, was released for Amiga and for the Mega Drive, and it was uh, developed and published by Core Design. So I, I will have to say that you know, bringing this game is is not because it was one of the best platforms uh, on on the platform genre actually, but after finishing and and getting bored of games like Zool, Cool Spot, and Super Frog, I mean, I was playing all of this in the Amiga. My my cousin brought this one home, and I remember thinking that you know this was a breath of fresh air. Um, Bubba and Sticks is a, a 2D cartoon-like platform game where we play with the character Bubba, a denim overhauls redneck, you know, he has this uh, yeah. this very nice clothing, uh, piece of clothing on top of him, and his stick that is called, well, Sticks, you know, that's his name, <laughs> Sticks. <laughs> but Sticks is no ordinary piece of wood. He's a sentient being that can be used to help Bubba reach higher spots, kill enemies, and, you know, be useful in general. In most of the cases, he's actually more helpful than the actual character uh, Bubba. Because Bubba is, you know, just sometimes a little bit useless without his uh, his partner. Uh, now, I, I remember that, that this was one of those platform games that, you know, it, it made me stop to think several times. The game is quite challenging, and when I say quite challenging, it's literally very challenging. And there are some puzzles that are not very intuitive. There are absolutely no clues on this game whatsoever on what you have to do. Like something being highlighted, like, you know, put your stick here. Sorry guys, that I didn't mean to do so that joke. Wrong. No, I, I didn't mean to do this joke, but but that's that's the game. The game is a guy and a stick. So uh, well, literally two sticks, but we're not going to get technical on that. But it's one that is a sentient being. And, you know, back to it. There's literally no clues on what you have to do. And I guess that ultimately this is what grabbed on, you know, grabbed me onto it. The sheer difficulty and the many, you know, effing L, I don't know what to do, ended up giving me the motivation to actually finish it. And, and, and I guess that after a couple of weeks of starting it all over again, I've beat the game. Because it was like this. You had to start all over again and again and again and again until you would actually go to the end. Yeah, uh, you this... beat the game, not anything else. So Exactly. It's, it's one of those, you know, there was no safe states back then. Kids nowadays, they have everything good for them. Back then, you'd have to leave the computer on if you wanted to make a safe state. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's one of those games that it's no longer officially available through any, uh, you know, authorized means, let's say. But uh, I'll give you an advice to, to our audience. Um, search for Amiga Live on Google and you will thank me later. Just, just go look for it and uh, you will find that uh, it's a very, a very useful piece of, of software that, uh, that can help you with some of the, the Amiga yeah. nostalgia and stuff like that. So um, give it a go, guys. Uh, I've played this on the Amiga mostly, uh, but majority of the people that I know that played this game was actually on the Mega Drive. Yeah. Uh, because it was, I mean, it was a, a cool. It had some good sprites. It was very well animated. It was, it was a nice game. I, I don't think it was. It, it was mostly reviewed positively, and people actually liked it. But I don't think it was a bad game, uh, at all. Uh, at but all. again, not a blockbuster. But you know, just try it out. It's going to be challenging. It has some really cool and interesting levels that you have to have to go through, uh, with yeah. Bubba and his stick called Sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Every this time I remember so the name of this game. <laughs> anyway, let me change the subject completely and go to another game. Okay? Please. Please. I'll save you. Sure. So, I'm going to talk about a game from 83. A lot of mold also. I that's, played that's this the, game for the, the first year I was born. time on my, yeah. on my Godfather's was, PC. An I was born on that year, man. I was born on 83. So, yeah. bring something new prior. Me. Mm. So, eh, close. But, I played this on my godfather's PC in Olivetia 286. It's a game okay. called Good Load music. Runner. Ah! Okay. This was a pretty cool game back then. Yes. It was yes, awesome. It, was. It, was, it also had quite a simple premise. You had this character, and you just had to grab under the level the pieces of gold that were scattered around. It had several platforms and ladders. And you had some enemies or guards going after you, so you didn't grab the gold. And after you grabbed everything, you just had to go to the top of the level and climb the stairs to the next one. This was basically what you had to do. How would you go about doing this? You could not jump, you could just walk left, right, go up and down the stairs. And you could shoot to the ground and open up a hole. And if the guard fell in the hole, you could pass on top of him to the other side. 
or if you waited too long the guard would come back up and it would, it would keep chasing you but if you opened up a hole on the ground and the guard fell a bit later the hole would eventually fill up with the guard inside and he would die but it would re-pop back in the level elsewhere but it was a um, Sometimes it was a solution to get around some of the guards because taking them out of the equation for a bit was magical to to get around some levels and you had actually some pieces of floor that you couldn't actually open up a hole it was a metallic floor but it was awesome I don't know if you played this one a long time or... I did I did but to be honest with you I can't remember in which platform I played this um I, I don't yeah. this did this came out for the spectrum I, I I'm not sure I'm not sure uh, I know I played it on the 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 PC on my my Godfather's PC and I think I played this one on the NES I'm pretty sure I played it on the NES also I think I think it was on the NES co uh, clone that I had because that's that's I, I remember that it wasn't as recent as the PCs I played this yeah. on the PCs but I remember that it wasn't the first time I played this before. And I know that this is a game from the Commodore 64 era. Yeah, so I was wondering if this was actually if this was actually uh, from the ZX Spectrum. But now that you mentioned the, the, the NES, uh, most likely I played this on the NES clone, which was, I believe it's, it was what I had directly after the Spectrum. Okay, no, I had a Game Boy. Uh, I had a Game Boy. And then I had this NES, this, uh, the NES clone. This uh, eight-bit one, yeah. but, this, but again, this yeah, game was fun. I, I, it was serious I, I, fun. It, it was a game that didn't, you know, didn't captivate me immediately because I found that the game was, I mean, it was just too simple. You know, you you were just going up and down on stairs, and if 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 you actually played this on the eight-bit era, you would remember that this actually graphically was not that. No, you know, it was wasn't. not that interesting considering what you already had in the eight-bit era. Was the was, was you had like the stick man. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it was just, you know, a, a, a walls made of bricks or something orange yeah. to resemble bricks. He had some ladders and then you it had to be, you know. Simple. It was graphically yeah. very simple. But but still, it, it became uh, it became one of those classic ones. And I think that, that uh, once again, yeah. I think it's the challenge of this game as you progress uh, yeah, on and on and on. Awesome. It's, you, it's challenging. It's you, hard. hard. The game is hard. Yeah. You have to sit really hard. To, to clear yeah. some of the levels, and it's 150 levels, if I recall right. The game was oh, tough. Geez. Seriously I did, tough. I, I didn't remember. I think that the one I played with that many levels was what? Battle City, maybe? Uh, I don't Battle remember. Battle City seemed one. to have a lot of levels because you could actually design levels and there were a lot of clone games with a lot more levels because I think it had like. 25 or 30 i'm maybe. not too sure maybe you know those those yeah. carts that those multi carts with yeah. that had like several games it, it, that it had battle city 145 which was basically more levels for battle city <laughs> yeah, but it was exactly. still the same game <laughs> those, those oh my god just, just brought a lot of hacked games and changed games but yeah. it was basically the same game with some minor tweaks absolutely or different absolutely. levels well, uh, thanks for bringing that one. I guess that everybody played it. Uh, if you didn't, just let us know in the comments if you didn't play this one uh, or any other game that we actually talk about. And and I think now it's time that we get to the big game. So the game that we're going to spend some time talking about. We it. opened up and... with a big game, with a legend. What are you talking about? I, I, know, I know, I know. What I'm saying is a big game because... Um... It has many innovations, and I'm sure that you know Donkey Kong and 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 also Load Runner had their innovations too. But um, well, you know, first of all, I tend to speak a, li a little bit more when it's about my you know my all-time favorite games, and I can't I can't seem to miss an episode or a couch episode. Sorry, I can't seem to miss a couch episode without talking about a point-and-click game, which is what I'm going to do today. <laughs> so, guys, apologies. Uh, bear with me, because there's really some cool stuff about this game. And for those who didn't play it, you guys have really have to try it. So, the game I'm talking uh, going to talk about today is Blade Runner from 1997 for MS-DOS. <laughs> this was developed by Westwood Studios and published by Virgin Interactive. So, Westwood Studios being already a, a very well-known uh, um, company uh, and obviously made other point-and-click games also, uh, but also, but I think Westwood was more um, known for uh, Command and & Conquer. And, uh, and, and one of them, I mean, obviously, there's many games that made Westwood Studios uh, good. But again, 
Another point in click, of course, and this one is quite special, you know, for a number of reasons that I'm going to elaborate further. To start off, the game is not a direct adaptation of the movie. However, despite that not feature the iconic role of Harrison Ford as, as Rick Deckard, it is a side story that is actually parallel to the movie's plot. And although he's not there, I mean Harrison Ford, there are several mentions of Deckard's presence and he actually shows up on the background at some point. Um, the year is 2019, so I guess that we already gone through that and we don't have replicants and flying cars, so uh, 2019, Where do you sorry, that, Ridley Scott, that was a lie. <laughs> so, uh, and in you the game, Blade Runner, bastard. yeah, man, that, there's many things that didn't happen. If we go for Back of the Future, Back to the Future, none of that happened. I don't see yeah. flying skates, I don't see time traveling cars, man. You well, guys there are, are flying skates. If you actually jump off a building with a skate, you'll be flying for a while. Yes, before exactly. You hit the ground, so. It's like a car can fly. You throw the car yeah, off a cliff exactly. and that's it. And the car flies. Everything can fly for a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me just go ahead with this because I, 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 this, this has a lot to cover today. Um, as I was saying, we take the role of Detective Ray McCoy <clears throat> that is tasked with pretty much the same mission as Deckard was in the movie to hunt down and apprehend a group of dangerous replicants. Uh, the events of this game start right off after the movie begins. So there's that there's some connection with the movie here. Um, and, um, you know, where McCoy is uh, needs to find uh, why this group of replicants is, is actually uh, uh, murdering animals. So it, it is a strange thing that these replicants are murdering animals. They're not harming people. Or and this is considered to be a heinous crime since most of the animal species were extinct. Because, as you know, in this futuristic world, you know, everything was taken over by technology. And it's mm. kind of like the downfall of society because of that. Uh, through this adventure, we'll visit a series of locations and perform proper detective work. That will get us to the objective of uncovering the mystery of these animal murders and capturing the ones responsible for them. I'm actually not going to focus so much on the story because I don't want to spoil anything about it because the story is really good on this game. Uh, but there are so many technical marvels that we have to talk about that uh, we'd be here for hours. And so I, I want to jump off uh, right or jump on directly on these innovations and, and tell you guys a little bit about it. So let's address the graphical things first. Um, unlike any point in click that we've seen that usually, you know, at this time at, in the 90s had M FMV rendered characters on top of a green screen uh, and where the, the center scenery would be drawn, Blade Runner actually innovates because they use 3D rendered characters on top of a live background. And when I mean that it's live, it's because it's not entirely static, but also because the whole rain, game runs on non-linear real time. And I will go in depth with what it is, but in, in short, basically this game is is alive, all of it. It has AI controlling each one, or you know, pseudo AI, let's say, controlling each one of the characters. About the music, and, and again, soundtrack, amazing. Uh, there's nothing to say about this. Considering that it was something that Warner Brothers said right in the beginning, that Westwood, they could not touch the footage or, or the soundtrack of the original movie, you know, Frank Lepatsky, the, the composer, actually did an amazing synth work. I mean, the synthesizers on the, the the soundtrack of this game are just amazing. And it made it as immersive as the movie. Uh, just on a side note, uh, Frank Lepatsky, which was the, 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 the composer, also did Command & Conquer's two, uh, Command & Conquer's Tiberian Sun soundtrack, as well Lands of Lore 3 and Command & Conquer Red Alert 2. So many of those really heavy guitar intros or guitar soundtracks that we listen to in Command & Conquer Red Alert 2, uh, this was actually the composer that played them. This guy is, is really good, and, and yeah. I, I, I was looking more into him, and he did, he did participate in a lot of good game soundtracks. So this guy is really, really good, uh, and I didn't know him. Um, Gameplay-wise, it brings us some very unique elements of the movie, such as the Voidkamp machine, uh, that it was used to test this, to test through a series of questions if the suspects were replicants or humans, as well as the Esper system that was a powerful computer to analyze pictures at a very detailed level. So you you'd be actually doing a lot of detective work with these two tools, and which are you know very you know uh, they are very useful tools also in the movie and 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 related to it. Um, on the gameplay side also, it has a combat mode where in some situations you would have to use your gun to point and shoot. So this is how you're going to get rid of some of the enemies uh, during the game itself. And last but not the least, let's go back to that AI controlled part because this is what, what to me is the most uh, inv I mean, innovative stuff that they've put here. here. Um, I mentioned the non-linear real-time uh, game, and usually in point-and-click games, if you under if you know how it works, it, it, your main character or the game revolves around the main character, where you have to do something for the rest of the world to move forward and unlock certain progression points. 
that's not the case here. Like in Blade Runner, the NPCs that are actually on the game or the characters on the scenario, they will continue to do their own things regardless of you being present or not. One of the most practical examples of this is that the computer mainframe that the that uh, that you have, the computer mainframe of the police, as the game develops, you'll find more and more clues related to your case that are updated or uploaded by other Blade Runners. So there is always a stream of information coming in that is not from you. It's actually from other people in, within the game, not multiplayer, but I mean other NPCs. And, and I guess to wrap it up in gold, and, and this is another one that this game is just spectacular, Blade Runner has 13 different endings. Yes, you heard that right. It's 13 different endings with the possibility of a different destiny for Detective McCoy at the end. So... Guys, for a game, game yeah. for a game that is available in GOG for seven point eighty nine euros, let's make it eight euros round numbers. Uh, it's a one point three gigabyte game because the game, the original one was uh, was uh, four discs, four CDs. There was also a, 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 a re-release later on with a DVD. But again, guys, it's it's a spectacular game. If you like the cyberpunk team, if you like Blade Runner, if you like the movie, I think this was. This was the best homage that they could pay to the movie, to the movie, because yeah. honestly, there's not a lot of successful games adapted from movies, um, but this is one of them. This is actually yeah. a very, very successful one. Mm -hmm. It sold over a million copies. You mentioned over it on GOG million. for eight euros, and you can actually grab it quite frequently at a discounted price. There, I yeah. think I got the, yeah. the the game when it launched on GOG again for for four euros. Half the price. There, there was. Uh, I, I believe every cent. Just, just. I think it was last weekend. Uh, I remember getting a, a notification from GOG on discount. Uh, it was retro retro gaming discounts that they had, and I believe Blade Runner was there at a very, very low price. There, there was other games also, yeah. but th this is frequently on sale. This yeah. is not a remastered version or anything. This is actually uh, the same version, the one from 1997. I mean, if they would do a remaster of this, I would buy it immediately, but there isn't. But at least GOG had, uh, you know, uh, they, they just grabbed the game and adapted it to newer platforms because, guys, it, it's 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 totally unmissable. This is one it's of those games play. that... It's an awesome it's, game. It's really it's an awesome game. It's a gem. Game. Play it because it's, it's actually, you know, amazing at every yeah. single level. So, Blade, you played this one? Oh, yeah. I'm not too sure if I found a lot of the, the endings you mentioned. Well, I think I completed the game twice yeah. with two different endings, but I didn't know that there were that many different endings. That, there's a lot of replayability uh, replay possibilities one. on this. Yeah. I really you can actually... You can actually every single step of the game, and 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 actually this AI also randomizes a lot of things, like the 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 stream of clues that go that show up on the computer made by other Blade Runners. Every time you start the game is different, yeah. so sometimes the, the the clue shows up early, sometimes it shows shows up later. Uh, yeah. The way you interrogate people, the way you force yourself, if you interrogate, or if you actually talk to them, uh, and lead things in a more you know softer way let's say it all influences what you're going to happen what's going to happen to you at the end because there's three main paths that the story can lead uh, in the end but i'm not going to talk about that but i'm going to let actually people make every playthrough completely different and enjoy the game every single time yes which is yes. awesome there's there's a very good potential uh, of replayability as i said and, and 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 that's an explanation why the game itself uh, was so big at that yeah. time because you know four cds i mean i know we had phantasmagory with more but that was because of the full FMV. Here, there's yeah. not a lot of FMV on there. It's just basically all the game's possibilities that you know lead to different scenarios and so on, and makes it so big. So, um, grab guys, this uh, on thank GOG, you, guys. Please, yeah, this game deserves grab it. On. Guys, thank yeah. you for uh, putting up with me. Uh, I could speak a lot more about this game because there's a lot of more uh, uh, technical details to talk about. Maybe for a later episode or for a, a dedicated one to this. I don't know. Uh, just, just a suggestion. Just Let's see yourself about because you talked about putting sticks somewhere, but you redeemed yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah exactly, exactly. So uh, actually, we can ask the the audience and and our you know viewers if if they would like to see something dedicated to this game or any other for that matter. If they would like to see it done here, I can. I can do some of my, you know, specific you know, video. We can have an yeah. in-depth look at some some stuff. So just I can do know. something like the the couch recommendations, like we have in Portuguese, but we can make it in English. I don't know. Let's see what the guy That's says. Let's see if they give yeah. me any. 
But give if us they some give feedback. me some work down there. <laughs> give us some guys, feedback, let me know. Guys, don't forget, before we get to the end of the video, just drop a like, it helps us immensely. And don't forget to subscribe and share the, the channel with your friends. Bring more people to, to the couch. We need to fill this up and have a big couchies party in every single couchies zone. See? No more mistakes. I fixed it. Exactly, exactly. So we need to get we get we need to get more people. Uh don't forget guys, there's have also the, the, the email address is open for for you for any participations if you want to send. We already had some. Thank you very much for the guys that sent that, but we want to keep bringing people here. So uh that'll be all for today. We're gonna wrap it up. Uh thank yep. you guys for watching and Blade, just uh lead us out to it. Yeah. Guys, have a great week. Stay safe, get some awesome games, get Blade Runner, have fun with it, and game on, everyone. See you next week. See you, guys. Game on. See you next week.